Hi, my name is Deborah Henney. I'm a wife, author, mother, and speaker. Today, I want to release a prophetic word called pouring joy. Now, when I first started to get this word, I had the sense of God like pouring oil, and it was, and he called it joy all over his people. And then he brought to mind Psalm 45. Now, I read the NAS, that's just my preferred version for my own study. So first I'll read it in the NES. Then he asked me to look it up in the Passion Translation. So I will, after I read it in the NAS, I'll flip over to the Passion Translation. In the NES, Psalm 45, 7, verses 7, 8, 11, and 15 specifically. Oh, 7, 8, 10, 11, and 15 were the ones he particularly highlighted in the whole chapter. So I will just focus on those. Uh, verses 7 and 8 start in the NAS. Therefore God, your God, has anointed you with the oil of joy above your companions. All your garments are fragrant with myrrh and aloes and cassia. Out of ivory palaces, stringed instruments have made you glad. Listen, O daughter, give attention and incline your ear. Forget your people in your father's house. Then to verse 11, then the king will desire your beauty because he is your Lord. Bow down to him. They will be led forth with gladness and rejoicing. They will enter into the king's palace. Okay, now in the Passion Translation, the same passages. That's verses 7 and 8, then 10, 11, and then 15. In the Passion Translation, it reads, He has anointed you more than any other with his oil of fervent joy the very fragrance of heaven's gladness. Your royal robes release the scent of suffering love for your bride. The odor of aromatic incense is upon you. From the pure and shining place, lovely music makes you glad. That makes you glad is played for your pleasure. Now listen, daughter, pay attention and forget about your past. Put behind you every attachment to the familiar, even to the, those who once were close to you. For your royal bridegroom is ravished by your beautiful brightness. Bow in reverence before him, for he is your Lord. What a grand, majestic entrance, a joyful, glad procession as they enter the palace gates. Now, he particularly seemed to connect this with the Esther word that I released before. And interestingly enough, um, I did not, I was not aware of this. It kind of, it came up on a Facebook post by uh, the Messianic Rabbi Jason Sobel, where he had a graphic and it said that Purim, which is the celebration of remembering Esther and her and the role and God's work of delivering the Israelites, the Jewish people, uh, through the vessel of Esther. And that is not just a day of rejoicing, it's a whole time of rejoicing. So it's like the whole month is a joyful rejoicing month, which I did not know that um, when he released these words to me. Um, but, and I realized I didn't actually read the prophetic word. So let me read the prophetic word real quick and then we'll get back to that. God, I felt the Lord say, I am pouring out joy. My oil will run freely and pour over my people my beloved. I am pouring out my joy even in the deepest cracks, the harshest places, the greatest wounds. For as I pour out my joy, I am bringing about healing, a binding, a renewing, and even a creating. The fragrance of my love will go before me and the recompense of my suffering will be complete as my people receive what I have paid in full of their inheritance, the blood rights from my blood and body a fragrant offering of love. My fragrant love will result in the fragrance of heaven in your lives, as even those places of hurts and wounds become places of rejoicing and exceeding joy. Have faith in my workings, for I am the miracle-working God and the God of the impossible. Look up. Keep your eyes fixed on me. Release the past. Release attachments to anything that is not of me or from me. Release the desire, even the fear, of pleasing fellow people. For when you do, it is beautiful in my sight. And he emphasized that. It was all caps. 
It is beautiful in his sight. Trust me in this. Trust me to lead you forth in gladness and rejoicing. Trust me that this will result in greater measures of glory, even in enrobing in my glory, of my glory. Trust me that my joy is your strength and more than enough to exceedingly, abundantly meet your needs. Trust me to walk in celebration and rejoicing, even though the healing work is not yet complete. Trust me that as you go forth, praise and rejoicing, praise as you, hang on, let me read that again. Trust me that as you go forth in praise and rejoicing, that I will do it. Trust me that the joy will be great and overflow in your life, dripping and flowing onto those around you, surely a sign of my power and presence. I am releasing joy, a joy that is beyond understanding, a joy that is unfading, a joy that is rooted in my power and empowers. So, um, yeah, that was a pretty powerful word. And honestly, one that is something that, you know, as a prophet, God releases a word to a prophet for a church or a body or a network or, um, and then he kind of weaves that revelation into you. And he does that often through life experiences. So, you know, this is something that even as I'm reading it is really, honestly, going to be real, <laughs> ministering to me right where I'm at. Um, that even though there's work that he's doing in our hearts, um, that even though it's not finished, we can be led forth through that in his, in his joy and rejoice in him. And when we do that, and there, when we, in order to do that, we have to release and let go. Um, in the verse, it talked about releasing attachments, even to things that were familiar and, you know, in the NAS, it used family. I mean, that can be the, the imagery of family. In the, TP, in the Passion Translation, it talked about release attachments uh, to your past, even those things that are familiar. Sometimes we have mindsets um, and patterns of actions and thought patterns that are familiar, so they're very comfortable. Uh, we kind of lean into them and rely on them rather than relying on the Lord. But God is saying, Trust me. Let it go. Because when you do, that is a ravishing beauty. And that's how it was worded in the Passion Translation. Ravished by your beautiful brightness. It's a ravishing beauty in God's sight. When we let go of those things and instead let him lead us forth in joy and rejoicing, finding strength and healing in his joy, even though we haven't received the fullness of the healing work in our lives. So it's like an offering of faith. Like he offered, it talks about that fragrant offering of love. He paid for us to have that healing. That's his fragrant offering of love to us. The healing, that restoration, that recompense. But our fragrant offering of love back to him is our faith, our trust of releasing and letting go and saying, God, I know you're more than enough. Um, and, uh, and God says that is beautiful. And in the prophetic word that he gave me, he's talking, of, he says that that's going to cause, um, greater measures of glory, even in enrobing in his glory. Because when we do that, when we, uh, are able to be led forth in grace, led forth in joy, even through the hard things. That's such a testimony and a tangible representation of God in us, of God's strength, God's power, God's grace. Because in and of ourselves, we just can't. We're, we're human beings. Um, and so that seems to be what he's really calling us to do as a people. To release those familiar, to release the attachment. Sometimes maybe it's even a family pattern that he's calling us to release and be led forth out of that into his, uh, with rejoicing, um, trusting that his joy is more than enough, that his joy is going to heal. It's going to be abundant. 
Uh, it's going to empower us. It is a power in the, the sense with this pouring the anointing oil of joy, the, the oil of joy all over his people was that there was such a power in that. It was an empowerment of healing and uh, an empowerment of, of glory and of power for his people. That's going to be a living demonstration of him in our lives. So again, um, he's asking us to uh, trust, to let go, to release. I know recently, you know, I was carrying a, a burden from a life situation and it was, it was really hard. I'm going to be real. It was very hard, uh, weighed down, weighed on me very, very heavily, um, was kind of, it was very difficult. Let's just put it that way. And, um, and God said, I said to cast all of your burdens and it, and I said, what? And I didn't think of this as a burden because it, to me, I thought of it as a hurt. Um, and but God called it a burden. And he said, I said to cast all of your burdens. So he said, this burden that you are choosing to hold on to, just let it go. Let it at my feet release it, cast it on me, so you can walk forward in deeper revelations of my grace and of my joy, because in that there's healing, healing for you and healing for others. So be blessed and be encouraged, and let's go forth with rejoicing in the strength of the power of God's oil of joy.